Okay, as I mentioned, we are going to develop a flexible budget in this particular chapter. And then we are going to further use our actual results and our master static budget against the flexible budget. And we're going to calculate a multitude of variances. Okay, so the flexible budget shifts the budgeted revenues and the budgeted cost up and down based on actual operating results. Okay, so we're talking about the activity, the sales units. All right, so whatever that quantity is for our actual results, we're going to use that information coupled with the standard items used in the master static budget. And we're going to flex the master static budget into a flexible budget. Alright, so it represents a blending of actual activities and budgeted dollar amounts. Budgeted dollar amounts for the sales revenues per unit. Budgeted dollar amounts based on our standard direct materials allowed per unit and the rate that we expected to pay for those direct materials, that price that we expected to pay, and then our standard quantities of allowed direct labor and the standard rate that we expected to pay for those. Those are just a few examples of the standard rates that we're going to be using and flexing them for this new actual quantity. And once we've done this, this will allow us to prepare the level two and level three variances. Okay, those calculations. And they are going to answer for us, why were we off? Were we inefficient in our use of materials? Or were we very efficient in our use of materials or labor? What did we uh, do price-wise? Did we overpay? Did we underpay? All of those things can be answered using various variance analysis. All right, so here is our level two analysis illustrated. This is where we go and make that center column, the flexible budget. And again, with the flexible budget, what we do is we take the quantity from the units sold, the actual units sold, and we place that quantity here in the flexible budget column for units sold. Notice they match 10,000 and 10,000. And then we're going to use the 10,000 times the other underlying components here in our master static budget. Whatever we originally had planned for our sales revenues, selling price per unit, our direct materials per unit, our direct manufacturing labor per unit, our variable manufacturing overhead per unit. And we're going to multiply those times 10,000 in order to get those variable costs based on the flexed amount. I want you to notice that regarding fixed manufacturing costs that we are using the exact same total fixed cost from the master static budget in the flexible budget column. Because within a relevant range, we expect those fixed manufacturing costs to remain the same in total. So that's why those two numbers match. Okay, so if we were to go and calculate out why these numbers came to be, um, our direct materials costs in our master static budget planning were $60 
per unit. So $60 per unit times 10,000 units equals 600,000. Our direct manufacturing labor costs were $16 per unit. Take that and multiply that times 10,000. And our variable manufacturing overhead costs were $12 per unit. And if you take that and multiply it times 10,000, that's how they got 120. All right, so again, what we're trying to do is take it from uh, apples to oranges, actual results, apples, static budget or the master static budget, oranges, and breaking this and putting it into a flexible budget so that we can talk apples to apples. I'm hoping you guys see that. We're taking the 10,000 quantity and saying, based on all of our planning information and our standard cost allowed for those components, what would we have expected had we set the master static budget at 10,000 units instead of 12,000 units? All right, so Based on this information, we can calculate differences between the master static budget and the flexible budget. And all of those are due to just the sales volume variance. Okay, so what is the sales volume difference? 2,000 units. We sold 2,000 units less than what we had originally planned. Our revenues were under by 240,000. We were favorable in direct materials, direct manufacturing labor, and variable manufacturing overhead. If we net all of that together, the revenues minus the variable costs, we have a contribution margin of 64,000 unfavorable. Unfavorable just related to the difference in 2,000 units. That's it. Because the pricing, the revenues, and the cost are all the same. The only thing that's different is the quantity between 12,000 and 10,000. On the other hand, though, we can take the flexible budget, that center column that has been flexed for the actual quantity sold 10,000 but using the standard prices and cost that were originally planned for and comparing that to our actual results again the quantities match 10,000 and 10,000 but these are the actual prices that we sold our units for and these are the actual cost that were incurred including the fixed manufacturing cost total. All right, we can then calculate variances between these two columns. Our revenues were $50,000 favorable. So in essence, we sold these for more money per unit than we originally planned to. But then when you dig into these variable costs, we have 21,600 unfavorable in direct materials. We have 38,000 unfavorable in direct manufacturing labor and 10,500 unfavorable in variable manufacturing overhead. Now these variable costs, consider what's making up these numbers. Did we pay too much per unit of direct material? Did we pay less than what we had planned per unit of direct materials? Did we use too much in direct materials? Did we use less than what was planned in direct materials per unit? Those kinds of questions are what we can answer when we dig deeper into how these variances came to be. All right, so we're going to see that as we go forward. 
All right, so continuing doing that favorable netted against our unfavorable um, variable cost, we have a contribution margin of 20,100 unfavorable. You can see that our fixed manufacturing costs were also unfavorable. We spent 285,000 versus our expected or planned or budgeted 276,000. So that's why we're 9,000 unfavorable. Our total result just from the flexible budget variances, again, pay special attention to the wording. The flexible budget variances is the difference between the flexible budget and the actual results. Where the sales volume variances are the difference between the static budget and the flexible budget. Okay, so sales volume is the only thing that's different between the flexible budget column and the static budget column. And the flexible budget variances, the quantities are the same, but we have different cost and revenues per unit, actual cost per unit, actual selling price per unit versus our standard cost, etc. per unit. Now if you'll notice, here we have 29,100 unfavorable flexible budget variants and we had a 64,000 unfavorable sales volume variance. If you net those two together, you get 93,100 unfavorable static budget variance. And again, get out that chart that I made and you will see that this 93,100 is your top line and we can dive down one level here and break it into the flexible budget variance and the sales volume variance. But then we can continue moving. The flexible budget variance can be broken down into the next level, which is price variance and efficiency variance. And over on the sales volume variance side, we can break that down. Why was that sales volume off? Part of it is because of sales mix, if we've got more than one product. And the other part of that is due to the sales quantity variance. We could then take those levels and break them down even further. And we'll dive into that as we continue on. So let's look at the next level here in just a moment. So some possible reasons why we might incur an unfavorable sales volume variance include failure to execute the sales plan. What did we plan to sell? How many units were we expecting that sales department to get with those customers and generate those revenues? If they failed to meet that goal, then it is going to show up here in that sales volume variance. We can also break it down by looking at the market as a whole. That sales quantity variance can be related to market share, okay, and market size. Weaker than anticipated demand. Is it because we did not receive the demand that we thought we would within our industry, within our market? Or did we have a market size error or the demand for that particular market went down? Okay, that would show up here 
in the sales quantity variance and that sales quantity variance can be broken down into those two additional variances market share variance and market size variance because a lot of this relies on that revenue or sales budget we could have aggressive competitors taking our market share we could have had unanticipated market preference away from our product. What if we had quality problems? Word on the streets travels fast these days with social media. Okay, it only takes one or two to let a lot of people know of insufficient or unsatisfactory quality. Uh, follow consumer reports on Facebook and you'll be surprised at what information gets disseminated and shared. Okay, so if there are quality problems uh, exhibited in our products, that will also affect our sales quantity, which of course affects our sales volume. Level 3 variances. All product costs can have level three variances. Our direct materials and direct labor will be handled next. And then overhead variances are discussed in detail in our next chapter. Okay, so right now we're going to look into our direct cost and analyze the variances there direct materials and direct labor both have price variances and efficiency variances and their formulas are the same all right so what price did we expect to pay versus what price did we actually pay and what price did we expect to pay for our direct labor versus what price did we pay? Now we've also got to consider what quantity of direct materials was budgeted or expected per unit of output and how much in direct labor was expected to be incurred per unit of output. Okay, so we need to consider how those master static budget numbers were put together and we can calculate variances based on the flexible budget dollar amounts for these particular areas versus the actual results for these particular areas. All right, so this is our center column, the flexible budget numbers what we would have expected at an actual quantity versus our far left column, the actual results. All right, so here we have our price variance formula. Our price variance is all about the difference in the price. All right, so actual price of the input what did we actually pay for the input minus what did we plan to pay for the input okay so actual price minus the budgeted price of the inputs and that number is our difference and we multiply that times the actual quantity of input. All right, so this can be unfavorable or favorable. Our efficiency variance is all about the quantity of input that we have utilized versus what we budgeted per unit. All right, so our actual quantity of input used minus our budgeted quantity of input allowed which was our standard quantity for the actual output times the budgeted price of the input notice that this is the 
budgeted price of the input, not the actual price of the input. And this up here is the actual quantity of the input, not the budgeted quantity of the input. All right, so this one is breaking it down into dollars, price variance. And this one down here is breaking it into dollars for our efficiency. We were either efficient or we were not in our use of materials. We either paid more or less for our items. All right, so if we go and look at the level three analysis, which is for our data set in chapter seven, you'll notice that we originally planned to use two square yards per unit that we were manufacturing and that we had intended to pay $30 per square yard for each yard that we needed. So 10,000 units times two square yards equals 20,000 square yards. 20,000 square yards times $30 per square yard. We expected to pay 600,000 but what we actually ended up using was 22,200 square yards instead of 20,000. And we paid 28 per square yard instead of 30 square, $30 per square yard. All right, so we could take and plug those numbers into the formula and we would be able to calculate that we were inefficient because we used more square yardage than we should have and we actually saved money per square yard because we were able to purchase it cheaper. Okay, so $28 a square yard is our actual purchase price but our $30 a square yard was budgeted, all right? If you plug the numbers in, you can calculate $44,400 positive price variance. So it's favorable, it's cheaper. But in our efficiency variance, because we used 2,200 additional square yards, we were unfavorable by the tune of 66,000 due to inefficiency. So we used more in direct materials than we should have. Now, there are a lot of underlying comments that could be made in regards to how this is happening. Is it because we bought cheaper materials that we ended up using more because they were poor quality? That is quite possibly an issue. Um, were our people poorly trained? There are a lot of things that we can drill down into and I will do one additional video here towards the end to talk about some of these things that we could see here. Let's look at the direct manufacturing labor now. Originally, when we were putting our master static budget together, engineering and uh, production got together with management. And they say, okay, we can do these in eight tenths of an hour. That is our standard time allowed per unit of manufacture. And with our HR people, accounting department staff, we come up with an hourly rate of $20 per hour that includes a lot of things in that hourly rate. And when we flexed that budget, we came up with $160,000 expected for our direct manufacturing labor. But our actual results ended up being $198,000, which is a total for that one line item of unfavorable $38,000. Now let's drill down into that. 
Why is that the case? Well, let's look at what's going on here. $20 an hour is what we had planned or expected or budgeted in that original master static budget. But we ended up having to pay $22 an hour. All right, so if we plug in our formula, we can calculate the fact that our price variance is $18,000 unfavorable just because we had to pay $2 more per hour. And that is using our actual rate. If you look at the efficiency variance, we were doing 10,000 units at 0.8 of an hour each unit, which would have given us 8 thousand hours. Eight thousand hours instead of the actual nine thousand hours. So one thousand additional hours were worked above and beyond what we would have had planned for nine thousand, uh, excuse me, for the number of units that we manufactured. So if you take that one thousand extra hours and multiply it times our predetermined planned hourly rate of 20, you get an efficiency variance of 20,000 unfavorable due to the fact that we used more hours than we had planned or budgeted. Again, there's a lot of underlying issues here with drilling down into these variances and just because one is favorable, it could actually affect another area and make another area unfavorable. Okay, so let's come back to that here in a few moments with our next video. Um, here is the rest of the information um, broken down for us on our different items. Again, they've got it broken out by level. We've got level one was the static budget variance. That static budget variance could be broken down into the flexible budget variance and the sales volume variance. So notice how this 64,000 unfavorable plus 29,100 unfavorable equals 93,100 unfavorable. But then each one of these on level two could be broken down into their respective areas. And our flexible budget variance, we've got a $50,000 selling price variance, 21,600 unfavorable in the direct materials variance. Our direct manufacturing labor variance is 38,000 unfavorable. Our variable manufacturing overhead is unfavorable by 10,500 and our fixed manufacturing overhead was 9,000 unfavorable. All of these would equal the 29,100 unfavorable from the flexible budget variance. And then we can break down our direct cost. We've got our direct materials variance of 21,600 unfavorable, which is the result of a 66,000 unfavorable direct materials efficiency variance netted against the 44,400 favorable direct materials price variance. So we paid less per square yard for the fabric or whatever it was, but we were inefficient in the quantity that we ended up using. With our labor, we were, um, pay, we paid more for our labor per hour, and we also used more labor hours than we would have expected. All right, so Again, these can be netted by the type of line item. So here's our labor, and then here's our 
direct materials and they net up to this particular um, line item. So direct materials variance can be broken down to these two and the direct labor can be broken down to these two. In regards to those uh, standard uh, costs and prices, we've talked about this earlier and you've seen some um, items in your earlier cost classes. The budgeted input prices and budgeted input quantities can be obtained from a number of sources, including actual input data from past periods, so our historical information of how we've operated in the past. We can even go and obtain data from other companies that have similar processes and standards developed by the firm itself. Um, there are a lot of different organizations that gather this type of information. Um, we can use it as benchmarking information to see how we perform versus these other companies or firms. A standard is a carefully determined price, cost, or quantity that is used as a benchmark for judging performance. Okay, so again, we've talked about efficiency, we've talked about pricing. Keep in mind where these numbers are being formulated. You've got that master static budget that are using these standard cost prices and quantities allowed for the items. And then we're comparing that to the flexed amount and to the actual results. And we can use that to evaluate our performance, make corrective actions, um, consider the good aspects of any variances, and make sure that information is shared with our other uh, plants or divisions so that they can also take advantage of those uh, things that we have learned to do better or possibly obtain uh, better materials or those kinds of things that have helped us gain those positive or favorable variances. Uh, variances can be journalized in our uh, accounting records. Each variance has its own account. I will not be requiring journal entries um, at this exact time. But do be aware that these items can be seen within our general ledger system. Favorable variances are credits. Think of a favorable being a credit just like a revenue is recognized with a credit. And then our unfavorable variances are debits. Think of unfavorable variances like you do expenses. Okay. Variance accounts are generally closed into cost of goods sold at the end of the period if they are immaterial. If they are material, many times they are rateably assigned to, for example, um, not just cost of goods sold, but also finished goods inventory and work in process inventory. Um, 